right. Sure. Well, dirty electricity, what is it? Where does it come from? How is it measured? How do we mitigate it? That's what we're going to talk about. To start with, we're going to do a DE perception questionnaire. So I'm going to ask you to raise your hands. Dirty electricity is the byproduct of a 60 cycle AC. That's the stuff, the juice that's in the, uh, in the cables and the walls powering this mic and these lights. True or false? True. Is that true? Some of you believe that that's true. Okay. How many believe that it's false? Okay. So some. It has properties of current, volts, and frequency. How many believe that's true? Mm -hmm. Quite a few of you. Um, compact fluorescent light bulbs have less dirty electricity than LED bulbs. Have more. It doesn't matter. One or the other. <laughs> more or less. Okay, those first two are true. Compact fluorescent light bulbs having more or less DE than LEDs is a function of manufacturer and how you measure it. Okay, Stetzer Green Wave filters remove DE, dirty electricity. I just want to know how many believe that. Removes it. Okay, well, I'm not having any takers on that. That one is actually false. What the filters do is they move the dirty electricity in volts to the low end of the frequency range and they make dirty electricity by shunting reactive current at the dirty electricity frequencies to the neutral. And then they run that through the house wiring. They create DE, their nonlinear device. Stetzer green wave meters measure DE. Okay, I have some hands on that. Those meters measure a small, they measure part of the dirty electricity from two kilohertz or 10 kilohertz up, but only the potential. They don't measure current, so they're not measuring any magnetic field aspects. So they're only a small picture. Dirty electricity is the harmonic byproduct of AC power from nonlinear devices. These are examples of nonlinear devices. And here I have Stetzer and Greenway filters as examples of nonlinear devices. We have solar systems, HVAC systems, charging systems, lights. It's synonymous with electromagnetic interference. It has measurable properties. We have current, potential, frequency, and EMR. And it may also be found as electromagnetic radiation from the Earth where there is stray current. Harmonic byproduct. Here we have power system harmonics. This is 60 cycle right here. We see 300, 600, 1200. These are all harmonics. This is how it works. When I run a linear electrical load, like an incandescent bulb, it draws a sinusoidal current at the same frequency as the source. When I do a nonlinear load, like a compact fluorescent light bulb, LED bulb, battery charger, it distorts the current wave and can distort the voltage wave. This waveform distortion is dirty electricity. These are oscilloscope waveforms. The blue is the voltage AC and the red is the current. This is an incandescent halogen light. This is an EcoSmart CFL. You can see how the current is distorted here. That's it. You distort the way the current's drawn. It's a nonlinear device. You have DE. 
what I'm showing here is harmonics from a three kilohertz in the three kilohertz range. Um, this is a spectrum. And so this is an incandescent halogen spectrum. And these frequencies right here are what comes in off the grid because the halogen is not producing anything. This is the EcoSmart. And we can see in the blue all of these new frequencies that are produced by this device. And then we can see the red, all of these new current frequencies that are produced by the device. And that's a spectrum And this is a spectrum analyzer. Origins of dirty electricity. The concept was developed by Dave Stetzer, an electric sensitive electrician. I heard him say in a 2008 building biology conference, and times on the telephone before that, that he was a specialist and was hired by consultants in Russia to be a consultant for them about dirty electricity. He was put into a small room with reams of data and translators, and he looked at that, and what he saw was they had research that identified frequencies with symptoms and that 5,000 kilohertz and above was especially problematic for the human body and especially for women. Those references aren't available. I talked to Dave Stetzer recently. I want that information. He said, get a translator and go to Russia, and here's the guy you talk to. He was assisted by Martin Graham, who was a doctor at UC Berkeley Electronics Research Center and also EHS. I talked with Martin Graham in 2006, and he said, he talked about electric sensitivity and symptoms. He said he was admitted to the hospital for a two or three day stay because of some problem he had. He developed type two diabetes. When he left the hospital, it went away. Early research by Magda Havas indicated significant health benefit from dirty electricity filters. Um, there's no follow-on research. There is no scientific database available to us for ELF frequencies, intensities, and biological consequences. There are anecdotal stories, and these show mixed benefits. There's lots of people who swear by these filters, and some building biologists use these, and some of their clients benefit, and some of their clients don't. We're going to discover why they don't in this presentation. These are instruments used in measuring dirty electricity. The Stetzerizer, which is shown here, 10 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz, dimensionless units, but one Stetzer unit is equivalent to 24 volt seconds. It's, a, it's basically a step change in the, uh, in the frequency. These are the green, this is a green wave meter, 2 to 100 kilohertz. It reads out of millivolts, an alpha labs meter. Alpha labs made this for green wave. These measures, these meters measure only potential. And they only measure it in those frequency bands. Here are some other instruments, and these instruments, well, most of them are going to be used here. Um, to demonstrate or show you the physical phenomenon associated with um, the meters. This is a, a Pico oscilloscope. You use this with a laptop, a spectrum analyzer, spectran analyzer. It's handheld. You connect it to a laptop and you have a, a really nice display. Uh, we have multiband meters. This NFA 1000 is really sweet because it has bands and you can measure the effect of dirty electricity from bulbs um, and, and filters in bands and actually see, hey, look at this, look at this, in a band where you don't have to have some sort of interpretation with the device. The gigahertz ME3051A right here is really sweet. You can look at this and get down to 0.1 nanotesla, 0.1 volt meter, when you're actually holding the meter where you can only see the a differentiation of one when you're using this meter and you're doing a walkthrough. So this is special. The Alpha Labs milligauss meter has a differentiation which you can use as well. I will present now examples of dirty electricity measurements. And so I can ask the question, which energy efficient bulb is best? Okay. 
it depends on how it's measured. And here's the information up front. The 120 volt halogen incandescent light has the lowest DE. If you're taking notes, write that down. That is the bulb you want to pick for yourself and your clients if you're looking for DE. So what I show right here is the setup for measuring electromagnetic radiation. I mean, if we're looking at energy efficient bulbs, we want to have one that's not going to put a bunch of garbage into the power line, and we want to have one that has low DE radiation so it doesn't affect our nervous system and other parts of us. So we want to know what electromagnetic radiation is. This is the setup. Here's the light stand right here. And here are two meters, the NFA 1000, and right here is the spectrum. And what I'm going to show you using the data log, the NFA data log capability, is that the Philips CFL has the most EMR. And when I use the spectrum analyzer, it has the most EMR. However, when I go look at DE, it's going to have the lowest DE of the bulbs that I show you. This is a data log, and what I have here is colors that are color-coded to what's presented here. If we just look at the greater than two kilohertz, which would put it in the range of the DE meters, and I look here, incandescent, EcoSmart CFL, EcoSmart LED, Philips CFL, Philips LED, and here's my amplitude scale here, we can see that the Philips CFL has the largest quotient. This is the magnetic field. We can see that it has this also. These step changes right here are the switching transients. Okay? When I look at the spectrum analyzer, over here on the right is a color scale. So green right here is a higher intensity than blue right here. Here's a timeline. This is where we've started the the sweep, you could say, and we've ended the sweep up here, and we just go through the bulbs. Here's Philips CFL. And here's Philips CFL again for the B field, the magnetic field. So across the board, Philips is the highest, and the incandescent halogen is the lowest. Now let's look at the DE, the dirty electricity that gets into the wires. What I've done is I've placed these instruments on the power cord to the light stand. So what we're doing here is we're measuring the emanations of dirty electricity from the power cord. This is how it would affect us in the house. And, and what we find when we do the comparison are these, are these very interesting terms. The oscilloscope waveforms show harmonics of nonlinear devices. The Philips halogen and compact fluorescent light bulb have the least DE. When I look at the NFA data logs, the Philips halogen and LED have the least DE. So that's different from up here. When I look at spectrum color history charts, the CFL has the least DE. The halogen is not shown. So that's like, you know, cattywonked from what we found on electromagnetic radiation. And there's a reason for that. Let's, let me just show you the, the setup right here. Here's the setup for the lights where you're looking from above, and you can see the instruments are placed here and they're not moved during the whole change. This setup right here is really interesting. It's my own private lab and with an assistant back here. And uh, that's Chi Ta. And I have filters, which we'll be talking about next, and here are my lights. Here are the instruments placed across the cord. Here's the laptop, which will be connected to the NFA 1000 and to the spectrum analyzer and the picoscope in later demonstrations. So here are the waveforms. They're all nonlinear. Philips LED looks like it's the least when I look at the stetzerizer meter, or the green wave meter, and I have those results right here, and I plug them in, here's my Philips halogen, 
It looks just like when I have no light there. That's our best choice. Ta-da-da-ta! You know, science does work. Okay? Here I have the EcoSmart LED, Philips CFL, Philips LED. So the Philips CFL has the least DE of these energy-efficient lights. If I look at, if I, and then that's across the board. Now, the next differentiation is with the line EM, line EM meter. And here, if, if I use that as my criteria, the EcoSmart CFL is better than the Philips. And so this illustrates that how you look at it, which meter you choose, your perspective then gives you the idea of whether or not something is better or worse. Ultimately, you know, if a person chooses to use CFL and LEDs, and you're the building biologist, is you want to choose something that Wanda is comfortable with because they all, the Cree, the Sylvania, the Philips, the EcoSmart, all have switching mode power supplies in their base, and they all have DE. The reason the CFL right here has the lowest DE is because it has to have a filter in the base, which moves the voltage potential, dirty electricity, to a magnetic field, okay, shunts it. And so in those, those pictures that you saw, you didn't see it because it was shunted. It was moved off, but you saw it when you looked at electromagnetic radiation. And when I look at it from the NFA perspective, the B field, it, it's inconsequential, except for the incandescent halogen, you don't see this greater than two kilohertz noise. Here's the B field. Here I have the Philips LED, Philips CFL, and so forth. So you see how these tools can be used? Tools that we have, not every building biologist has the, the spectrum, but we have the NFA 1000. We can look at things. This is what it looks like from a spectrum analyzer. The Philips LED has the greatest electrical. Over here, the Philips LED has the greatest you know, magnetic field. Here's the compact fluorescent light bulb Philips. And down here at the low end, it's really intense. What have I done? The Philips bulb had pushed all of the dirty electricity frequencies to the low end. You don't see it on the DE. They're there, but you don't see it on your DE meters. Here is the spectrum analyzer. Here are the frequencies right here. Here is color intensity. This is time starting with when we started to when we ended here. What's the scale up there? Kilohertz? 10 kilohertz. 10? Okay, below 10. Can you repeat that for the microphone? On the scale, this is 10 kilohertz. This is 5 kilohertz. So you can see if you bring this down, you pushed it all below five kilohertz. So, so this correlates with what's above there. So the frequencies here correlate to this spectrum right here. Here we see this spike right here, and it corresponds to the EcoSmart CFL right here. Can you explain the B field? B field is magnetic field. Okay. Well, now that we've done the lights, probably the most next question I get well, actually, filters is a question that I get most frequently, is which is the best filter and how do you use them? And I have some answers for you. Capacitive and inductors filters create DE as well as move it. It's an open circuit to 60 hertz, a closed circuit to greater than five kilohertz. So this open circuit is like a closed door. The closed circuit is like an open door to to EMI. It creates DE, dirty electricity, by shunting reactive current at the DE frequencies to the neutral. There will be multi-instrument comparison of four filters. What I want you to know is that the electrical field is decreased for both upstream and downstream filter locations. And I'll show you on a schematic what that means. The magnetic field is increased for the downstream filter locations for these filters. 
and I'm going to show you the effects of having multi-filters in place. And we're going to do this with several instruments. We're going to look at the setup. We're going to look at this from several instruments. And this chart right here illustrates the instruments and the results. Oh, yes. I'm going to sh discuss effects of multi-filters. The diminishing benefit after two filters, and there's no published, this is just a statement, there's no published basis for Green Wave and Stutzer DE criteria. There's no published basis. In other words, if you lower it this much, you have this much health effect. The vendor have stated criteria, and actually I have a slide that shows what they recommend and what that means for our clients if we put these in our homes. So we're, we'll, we'll review the setup for the evaluation. I'll show you oscilloscope waveforms that show that these are nonlinear devices. We'll look at a DE filter comparison using the simple uh, magnetic field meter. The B field is increased for all D downstream filter locations. In other words, if you put the filter at the end of the line, every place from there to the power panel will have an increased magnetic field associated with the reactive current from that filter. If you want to write something down, write this. The B field is increased for downstream filter locations. NFA data logs, they show that the B field is increased in downstream field locations. When you use the spectrum color history chart, the B field is increased for downstream locations. Okay? So every way you look at this, there's an increase in the magnetic field when this is placed in a downstream location. This is the setup. We have a light stand, and in the light stand we plug in a power strip, and this is the downstream location. It's the downstream because these are the sensors right here, the meters we're going to use, and the power panel is up here. So the power panel is upstream. The upstream location for the filter is here. First, let's look at the device information. These are the devices, and they're in order right here. We can see that they draw an amperage. Like the green wave right here is drawing half an amp. The PXDNA is drawing four tenths of an amp and so forth. And this is the DE effect as measured by dirty electricity meters, the Stetzerizer and the EM line meter. We can see that the Stetzer and the static have roughly, right here, have roughly equivalent readings. And the PXDNA right here probably has the least effectiveness by those readings. But we're going to find, when we look at the data, that the benefit is wonderful with this device, even though the DE meters says, hey, it doesn't perform as well as me. Oscilloscope waveforms. This is filter one. This is a Stetzer meter, a Stetzer, uh, Stetzerizer filter. Quite significant. This is filter two, green wave. Filter three, static. Now these two guys had the same current draw pretty much, and you can see that the amplitude of these is relatively similar, whereas the green wave is slightly less. This is the PXDNA, it's the closest to a normal waveform. Let's look at the spectrum. And when I look at the spectrum, Voltage is blue, that's what the voltage comes in, and it has these frequencies on it. Current follows voltage. Remember that we said that the, the EMI is shunted via reactive current at the dirty electricity frequencies. So here are the frequencies, and we can see these large current frequencies associated with the DE voltage. And we look at filter one, two, and three, and they're similar. 
and they're pushing stuff towards the low end. Here is filter four, and we see that it's much less right here. Filter four is PXDNA, and they claim a dissipative noise attenuation, and clearly in this spectrum right here, that's what you see. It's dissipating, it is not pushing it down to the low end. This is the ME3051A data. So I have the filter upstream and downstream for the electrical fields, and this shows the four filters. What it shows is, is that there's a 2 point, a 0 0.2 volt meter change from the baseline when I install this filter in, and it's the same for upstream and downstream. When I install the magnetic, when I install the filter downstream, it increases the magnetic field. Here's what the filter installed. So you're getting right here with the Stetzer, you're getting 12 reactive amps. Well, excuse me, you're getting 12 nanotesla of field at the cable associated with the eight tenths of an amp current that you're adding to that circuit. When I install it upstream, there's no change. This is nanotesla. Not this is nanotesla. Nanotesla is shown right here. Here's the same setup, only we're using a compact fluorescent light bulb at the downstream location. So here's at the downstream location. We'll go back one. Here, okay, filter is downstream. I add all of this. I put the light in, and then I've added the magnetic field associated with the DE from the light. When I place the filter upstream, I get some reduction in the DE. So imagine this. Your client has compact fluorescent light bulbs through their house, and you install stetzerizers or green waves or static plug-in modules associated with those to decrease the dirty electricity potential component. And what you're doing is you're adding to the circuit the reactive current associated with each one of those filters. And the only reason from my perspective to do that, if Wanda, the proverbial EHS sensitive person, feels better. If Wanda doesn't notice, if no one in the house notices, it's not a good idea. And there are a lot of people, when this happens, they feel worse. And this is the reason. You're circulating and you're adding reactive current to the neutral, and, and it goes all the way through the house back to the power panel. And number four is the... PXDNA. This is the NFA log. Basically, we can't see significant information here to make any kind of conclusion. When I look at the NFA data log, wow! Here's Stetzer, here's Satic, here's Greenwave, here's PXDNA. Black is the component associated with greater than two kilohertz, okay? And we can see that all three filters increase DE in that, in that range, those three filters. This is the spectrum analyzer. What we're showing here is a, is a downstream. This right here is there's no filter upstream, down, no filter downstream, no filter upstream. And we can see that this line, or this, you could say, colored area right here, represents what's there unfiltered. We can see across the board that all of these filters remove the E field, whether they're upstream or downstream. When I look at the B field, there's a different story. When I place the filter downstream, I got a magnetic field. When I place it upstream, I don't. Downstream, upstream, downstream, upstream. And this is that, that last slide on a different scale where white right here corresponds to that color intensity right there. We can see that the static pushes a lot of frequencies down here, as does the green wave and the uh, Stutzer. In my case, the top is the, um, the PXDNA. How many filters? I get the question from my colleagues, many of whom I've discussed this with many times before. How many filters I feel that I need to bring the DE level with my green wave meter or my Stetzer meter down 
to some level. How many filters? Okay, so the purpose of this part of the demonstration is to show you the effect of several filters with respect to some of these instruments. We're going to do the DE3951A. There's no decrease in E field greater than two kilohertz after two filters. When I look at the NFA 1000 data logs and I add filters, I can't see a change on either field. When I use the spectrum analyzer, I see changes. Capacitive filters installed within the house, consequences, there's 10 to 20 amps reactive current at DE frequencies in the house wiring. And the reason I have placed this here is because the criteria, if you look at the Stetzer criteria, it says you need about 20 filters in your home to bring it down to where we think it's ideal. In Green Wave, it's a similar scenario. How many filters upstream? So this is the Stetzer meter, this is the line EMM meter, this is the ME3951A. So this is without a filter, with a filter, with the second filter, with the third filter. Here, I'm comparing three filters against an inline filter, and the inline filter takes it way down, just like that. This is the NFA data log electrical. You really can't see anything right here. I need to have a better, you could say, input condition um, that's constant to be able to really. Here is the uh, B field. You really can't see a lot of change when you're looking at more meters. When you look at the spectrum analyzer, this is E field. You really can't see any changes. Here's one filter, two filters, three filters. There's more push down here to the lower level with more filters. When you look at the B field, what you see is a gradient right here where there's a slight change. Uh, all of these filters are placed upstream. Okay, None of these are being placed downstream in this evaluation. This is an example from an analog where we're actually measuring the volts within the circuit, and we can see a gradual decrease right here in intensity. Hardly noticeable, but really noticeable to the sensitive. Capacitive filter consequences, I've mentioned this several times. The Stetzer recommendation is 20 filters to clean up the, the environment. Greenwave says, you know, you want to have levels between 20 and 50. They say between 20 and, and 50 millivolts are marginal. You know, how many filters do you have to install in a house to get that level? And these are the consequences. If you install 20 Stetzer filters, you have 17 amps of reactive current. If you install 20 Greenway filters, you have 10 amps of reactive current. That is a lot of DE in your house. This is the reactive part. Repeat the question, please. So Rodriguez asked, is this with or without load? And, and really, the load part, th th these are all unloaded, OK? There's a different way to look at it with load. But the idea is, is that you're adding this current to whatever current is already there. And this current right here is, is not canceled by the incoming current. This is reactive current that's not canceled going out. So this is the filter load. This is the filter load. DE mitigation. So we're going to do it. A DE mitigation protocol. Examples of DE. Some personal observations and future work. This is my protocol. Use a combination of, e, of EM meters, electromagnetic meters, electromagnetic field measurement meters, DE meters, to assess the DE condition. Mitigate the internal sources. Remove sources where you can. Put computers and entertainment systems on power strips that you can turn off when they're not in use, and especially at night. Replace variable speed controllers like HVAC thing, with single speed or multiple speed selectable controls. 
for PV and wind inverters and variable speed devices, these can be treated with inline EMI filters to remove the dirty electricity from the wiring. For external sources, where the total, total harmonic distortion is greater than 5%, you can ask the utility to come in and take readings and then correct the grid so that the total harmonic distortion is less than 5%. We can place appropriate DE filters at the service entrance on both phases to reduce the DE in the house. Use DE filters inside the home only if there is a clear benefit to the occupants. If Wanda feels better, if Uncle Roy feels better, it's the right thing to do. If people don't feel better, man, putting more current in the house. How do you assess total harmonic distortion? With an oscilloscope. Examples of DE mitigation. We're going to look at DE filter effects by installing a filter at the power panel. We're going to look at a whole house in terms of assessing DE mitigation with this instrument, this simple instrument. We're going to look at solar voltaic inverter filters. These are examples. This is the whole house. This is a neighbor's house, and they have a, a pool and a spa right there with a variable speed pump. And this is a solar voltaic installation and the new line filters are right there. Filter comparison at the power panel. So what we're doing is we're installing consecutively a filter to a, a duplex breaker. The PXDNA is a plug-in and there's receptacles right on the inside uh, of the garage behind this panel where these will be installed. And one per leg. One per leg. So this filter right here is two phase. The PX DNA are single phase, so you put one in each receptacle. We see that DE meter effects are not representative of what we see necessarily on the oscilloscope. And I would conclude that not every filter is right for the DE mitigation. These are examples of the filters. This is a static whole house filter. These are the environmental potential filters, the 27 and the 2000, and this is the PXDNA. These are the effects when we install these meters, when we install these devices, these are the meter effects. So we can see that the SATIC and EP2700 have relatively the same effects. The 2000 and the, well, actually, from the Stetzer perspective, they all have about the same effect. From the EM line meter, they have different effects. EM line meter, remember, goes from 2 kilohertz to 10 megahertz, whereas the Stetzer meter goes from 10 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz. So I'm looking, I'm in a different ballpark. These are oscilloscope images, and and really, when we're looking at these, these guys, the effects that I'm going to demonstrate are all oscilloscope images. So this is the static. This is the baseline. When I turn the static on, there's a change. If I look from here to here, the static tends to push things this way. It has new frequencies across here and across here and here and there. So while I have reduced the dirty electricity associated with what was on the line before, I've introduced new frequencies. So it's down in some places. And up, and up in other places. This is the EP2700. This one hurt when it was turned on. There's a reason for that. Here, we see an increase in frequencies right here. Well, this is, this is 10 kilohertz right there. This is in the hearing range. There's some new frequencies right here. That's in the hearing range. And you can see, wow, it's like a mixed grill. What did I do to get that lower DE indication on those meters? This is the EP2000. This is really sweet. We look at the current waveform here and here, and this one is softer. It's like not so fuzzy. And in general, if I look across the spectrum right here, there's a decrease. When I look at the PXDNA, 
there's some decrease, not as much as the EP2000 in the current waveform. And if you compare this to this guy, there's this general lowering. What's really interesting when you look at these spectrums and these filters, you know, and oh, that DE went down, and then you look at the spectrums, where did it go down? Where did it go down? I mean, you really have to, like, move these back and forth in front of your face to get that, where did it go down? Well, it did go down, okay? Or it created something new, which is painful. And what are we doing when we put these in? There is a benefit to putting these in at the power panel for a lot of people, okay? Even if these changes that we can see on the spectrum analyzer are subtle. Can you show those three in rapid succession again? Here we go. One, two. Just visually, which one do you think looks the best? The, uh, the EP2000 and the PXDNA. This is another example of, of, um, of mitigation. What we have is we're using um, filter one, which is the Stetzer filter, and filter four, which is the PX DNA filter, and we're installing these, one for each phase located in a receptacle near the power panel. What we have here is a baseline of voltmeters and nanotesla in the house using that handheld meter. Now we have a baseline with the power on and with the Stetzer and line EM, me line EM meters are in the kitchen area on two different phases. With filter one and with filter two, here on filter one, I can't see a change, or filter, filter four, I don't see a change in the electrical field in those places. So whatever effect that filter has it's not detectable with this meter. When I look at magnetic field, B field, I see there's a reduction in the B field at these three locations relative to the baseline right here. That's a successful mitigation. And this is despite what these guys say right here, the Stetzer, the line EM meters, it's like, this filter right here, which doesn't behave as well when I'm looking at it with a DE meter, performs as well when I'm looking at it from this perspective. Okay, we're going to jump to solar voltaics. Um, this is a solar voltaic installation. The yellow boxes are sunny islands, which intertie the solar voltaic system to the grid. And there's also a backup battery system. And so these gray boxes are the Sunny Boy inverters. What I have up here are two DNA line filters, one for each phase of this inverter right here. This picture right here shows the inside of what that box looks like. There is right here an inductor. And right here is a, a DNA, a dissipated noise attenuation um, circuit. Um, this is the electrician William Holland, and uh, this is that inverter opened, and basically we're running the wires through this channel here. This is the inside of the inverter. Right here we show a current clamp, there's a voltage probe right here, this is the spectrum analyzer. Um, here, you know, there's also an active differential probe and uh, a picoscope. First, this was a, an analog, in other words, volts in that circuit with the solar inverter in service. And what we see here are, this is like a living kind of thing. I have a peak. It decreases, and then it increases to a peak and decreases to a peak. Is so a time in the vertical axis? this is time in the vertical axis. This is intensity over here on the right. Here across the top, we have frequencies. This is 2 kilohertz right here. 
This is 62 kilohertz over here. This right here is at 16 kilohertz. Where's the beginning and where's the end? Which way is it going? We start here okay. and we end here. Okay. okay. Really interesting to see all these spikes right here, isn't Why it? Why does it go on and off? It's not going on. The inverter is still working, but the inverter goes through this like process. It's like a living kind of organism, you know, where it like peaks and then goes down. So measurements for a system pretty much need to be more long term than individual little snapshots for data logging. These are the oscilloscope pictures. This is the solar inverter without filter. This is the solar inverter with the DNA line filter. What a change. Look at these guys. Ta-da-ta-ta. <laughs> I can't tell you how many years it took me to get there. OK? How many? <laughs> Five years. Over here, we, we put a static filter at the sub-panel. This guy was out of service. And we can see that with the static at the sub-panel, I've accentuated the current, and I've increased some frequencies across here. This is the, um, the, the voltage and current waveform associated with the static. This is definitely like a nonlinear kind of effect, okay? On the, I, on, the on, the, on the magnetic side, didn't touch, didn't touch the problem. My personal observations. DE filters one, two, and three. That's Stetzer, green wave, and static in the living space or connected to the sub-panel are discomforting, to the main panel, are discomforting to me. Well, I mean, I, I have dog whistle hearing, okay? And it bothers me. And from a subtle energy perspective, I can tell that it affects the midbrain and central nervous system for me personally, okay? The cleanest PV systems are the Sunny Boy. And so if we go out there, and which is the cleanest of all those I looked at, the Sunny Boy SMAs are the cleanest. The dirtiest is the Outback. Outback now has a, an FCC qualified inverter. I haven't looked at it yet, but it's gotta be better than their other ones. I feel discomforted in homes with wireless devices, photovoltaic, and fluorescent lights. Photovoltaic. Dean turned off the solar voltaic system here in this building yesterday. Oh. Oh. You feel better? I feel better, and those that were with me in that conversation felt better. Okay? Well, what kind of inverter do you use here? I don't know. It's 15 years old. <coughs> when the Stetzer meter is greater than 400, with the ME3951A selected to, this should read greater than two kilohertz, I'm sorry about that, is greater than four tenths of a nanotesla. One nanotesla is 0 0.01 milligauss, okay? The building biology standards, you know, say that higher frequencies should be given more consideration. We don't know how much more, but I can tell you from my personal experience that these higher frequencies affect me and they affect my clients. You know, and we need some sort of standard. <coughs> you stated 10 times lower. And 10 times right. lower, yeah. That's 0 0.02. That's milligauss. This is, this is 0 0.004 so milligauss. Yeah. This room right here where I'm sitting is probably the lowest point in the room. It's 0.4 nanotesla, but other places or one and higher nanotesla, and it's higher as you get closer to the ceiling. Um, DE fields can be detected easily. So we have the NFA 1000, we have the ME 3951A, you have the DE meters. You know, I think at some point we need to train on oscilloscopes so we can measure what's happening in a space. You know, they can be detected in small rooms, in kitchens in particular, where there are a lot of circuits, even when the Stetzer meter is less than 100. And I have found that local hotspots of DEMER, like that magnetic field, seem to be unrelated to devices or wires. You might have said 0.004 milligauss. 
That's 0 0.004 milligauss. Installing one DE filter within the home can increase DE, dirty electricity, and all the other circuits. These are my personal observations. Future work. Okay? You know, as a building biologist, we need to assess filters to see which one is the most applicable for that upstream location. I can't recommend filters in the house unless Wanda feels better. And there's, unless there's some application in the house where everybody feels better. Um, an IBE protocol that has easy and efficacious assessment methods with an effective mitigation strategy. So we need a team. Exposure guidelines for these greater than 60 mains power frequencies. And the identification of appropriate research references for health effects. In other words, what frequency, what health, what frequency, what intensity, what health effect. And so we can come back and mitigate that scenario for our clients. Why is it beneficial again to put this upstream close to the power panel? Everything is down. Thank you, Oram. Oram has asked, why is it bene beneficial? Right here, for the whole house filter, it's beneficial to put the filter at the power panel and one that doesn't increase resonances associated with its use. Two of them, actually. There are two of them, one on each phase or a two-phase device. When we put it there, then we don't create reactive current within the branches and sub-branches and circuits within the house. Because everything is downstream from there. Because everything is downstream from there. So if I place the filter upstream, I'm not having current downstream. I'm not creating dirty electricity current downstream. I'm not creating frequencies downstream. A little bit from the PFD and A going upstream. Right? Not really. Michael, does it matter where on the panel it's put? They just need to be, if we're installing an EP2000 as an example, um, the rules for installation are within three feet and their own breakers, 30 amp, a duplex breaker, one for each phase. Take away from the presentation. <laughs> Dirty electricity has qualities, right? It has potential, current, and frequency, and therefore EMR. It's readily detectable. We need a sensitive instrument to detect it in the free space in the house. The best location for the filters is at the power panel. That's because DE filters shunt DE volts to current, reactive current, which increases the B field, the magnetic field component, in all upstream circuits. Halogen light bulbs, incandescent type, have the lowest DE. The 24 volt halogens have a power converter in it, which is painful and has a large field. I'd like to open for questions. Liz asked about the SATIC filter being advertised that it decreases the utility bill. And actually, capacitive filters can decrease the utility bill okay, in some way. It has to do with the power factor and changing the power factor. The meter only measures real power. It doesn't measure reactive power. And so static or green wave or Stetzer will have an effect on the power factor and could like make it more beneficial for the homeowner. This is filter three is the static. Let's see, I want to go one more. This is filter three. Filter one and two are capacitive filters. And when we look at capacitive filters on an oscilloscope, we see that they have a leading current to the voltage form right here. It's in front of it right here. And that's, by definition, a capacitive device. Oh, and that's the static has a lagging power factor. Both of them, you know, in terms of what's happening here in the real world, 
you know, one's leading and one's lagging. So they will have an effect on the power factor and effect on the billing. Is there another question? The question is solar voltaics on a roof. We're talking about the panels that collect the energy. Are they safe on a metal roof? And I would like to believe that they can be safe and I have some conditions. One is that the inverter is filtered on the, on the gazins and the gazelles. That means I put a filter on the DC inlet to the inverter that prevents the conversion frequencies from going back to the panels because those panels act like big flat plane radiators to the spaces below, which will energize the roof and those frequencies will then be radiated from the roof, the metal roof, into the living space. So the living space would have to be grounded. The, living, the roof would have to be a continuous piece, verified in installation or post-installation, and effectively grounded okay, to prevent an effect. And so that would be the approach, and, and hopefully that would be enough for sensitive occupants there. Okay, so Orem asked the question, we're in an attic dormer, and the photovoltaic panels are mounted on the south-facing roof and he scanned the roof with a, with a multi-axis meter, a tri-field so meter. The ceiling of a bedroom. The ceiling of a bedroom. So maybe it wasn't an attic, it was the ceiling of a bedroom. Yeah. And he didn't notice on his meters a significant change. And, and so I want to comment on that, okay? One is that we're looking at nano Tesla, and your meters are Gauss. And we're looking at tenths of a nano Tesla. Um, with an appropriate handheld device, okay? The field from a flat, pat, flat panel can be detected from the magnetic field perspective 10, 12, 15 feet away with an appropriately sensitive instrument. So your instruments weren't sensitive enough to detect this quality. One, your instruments don't have bands, okay? And, and so, you know, if I'm looking at one nanotesla or five nanotesla, 0.05 milligauss in the general area of the house is a half a milligauss, I will never see this little increment. Orem asks, is it biologically active, even if it's 0.01 milligauss? Even if it's higher frequencies. And higher frequencies. And I know from my personal experience that 0.01 milligauss is one nanotesla, and it's excruciating. Let, let me just note, Alex, Alex reports that the end phase reports the usage data, which is like a power line communication, over the power line, and that can only increase dirty electricity through that circuit through the house. So the question is, do I feel PV effects at night when they're not producing? Or do you measure? I haven't measured, and I don't feel it particularly. So it's you, you know, basically, I turn them off, and it's done. Okay, those panels are still there. In the evening... When the sun is down, those panels are off. The solar inverters are off and not energized. It's the same as flicking the switch. So Rodrigo asks about B field on the uh, solar voltaic panels. And my concern is about the dirty electricity component, the, freak, the conversion frequencies from the power conversion that feed back through the DC cables to the solar panels energizing the solar panels with those frequencies, and those solar panels become radiators. And so that's a, a personal observation, okay? Is there another question? Okay, if there are any other questions, I'll be here for dinner tonight and, and later.